which is good, you guys. Um, so, I've been doing a little, start a little bit of a vlog to show you guys what I do in my free time and uh, stuff like that. So right now I have, uh, I'm in my garage, and uh, doing a little bit of work on the bike, just a little bit of uh, maintenance on it, because you kind of have to. So the first thing that, that popped in was uh, my little engine start switch. Um, oops, shit. I ride my bike if it's raining, whatever, doesn't matter, I still ride it. So, I got some rain water in this and it rusted out right here. Um, see it's missing a little chunk right there. There's supposed to be a spring and a ball in there that basically, when you push down on the button, it'll, the ball will snap into a place and, you know. So that broke and was stuck in there and getting jammed, so I pulled it out. I don't really need it as long as I, uh... Um, it still switches back and forth pretty good without it, and as long as I don't randomly touch it, it'll stay in place, so I'm, I'm probably going to pick up a new um, assembly in the future, but for now I'm just going to fix it so where I can not have any worries about it, because it was getting stuck when I would turn it off, and sometimes I would turn it off and I'd have to sit there and jiggle it around to get it to turn back on. So that happened, and then this little bracket right here that holds it apparently snapped, if we can see right here, it's got a some JB Weld right there, that gray stuff, basically gluing it back together. Um, this, these aren't like high tension parts, so it's not like there's a lot of pressure on these, so I don't mind using a little glue to hold it together. Once again, I'll probably replace this in the future, but for now, that's just my quick fix until I uh, hop on eBay and find some parts to replace those with. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do besides give this thing a bath is we are leaking on this fork seal. It's been leaking for probably about three months now. It's like really oily. And you can see there's like build up. If we look at the other side, it's clean. And the worst part is I actually replaced these fork seals um, probably about six months ago. And apparently this one just went bad. So I'm going to check the fork and make sure I don't have any little scratches on here that's roughing up the seal. Um, hopefully I don't because, I, I, you know what I mean, the fork, fork, uh, the fork legs are pretty expensive. I think they call these the sanction. This is the fork sanction, the tube, and then inside you're going to have your spring and your dampener. Um, so I'm going to be pulling this off and putting my new fork seals on it that I purchased again. I use all ball racing fork. So when I bought these, I, was, I thought that I had bought the set. The set is supposed to come with uh, two fork seals and uh, two dust seals. Um, these were only the fork seals. If I would have known that, I would have bought one that came with everything I needed. So, basically this is the uh, dust seal, fork seals up in right here. Um, I'm going to be reusing this dust seal, so I'm going to have to be real careful not to rough it up too much when I pull it off so I can reuse it because they didn't give me another one. Um, I might actually, I actually have a spare set of forks, springs and stuff for this. I, don't know, I have a dust seal right here I could probably use if I wanted to. I know that this seal is bad. See, this is a fork seal. This is the dust seal. So I know that the dust seal might be still okay to use. But fork seal. Anyways, forks are a bitch and a half to take off, but I need to pop my bike up and I'm probably just also going to check my fluids. Just, like I said, run like a quick little check on it, make sure everything's up to par. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, maintenance and stuff you got to do. So, I'll probably show you guys what I do to get my bike off the floor. Um, I know they make triple tree stands and I don't have any because I don't really care for them because I have other expensive tools I've bought to lift up heavy stuff. So, we're going to use those instead. So I have this nice uh, shop crane that's rated up to uh, one ton and uh, this bike does not weigh anywhere near a ton so I use it to lift up the front half of my bike and I keep it on the stand for the back half so what I use to lift it I have these. Now these are some ends of some uh, uh, tie downs. Um, I mean you might be questioning these look a little flimsy but these are rated up to 500 pounds and these things can hold their weight. I have used them to pick up tons of things that were way too heavy and they hold up just fine so we're going to strap these in. I'm pretty sure this was how I had it set up last time I did this. I can't remember exactly how I did it but uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure it out. I know I need to strap down the back end because I don't like it to wobble so I, I like to strap it down to the stand so it kind of holds itself steady. So we'll come back when that's done. And there we go. Voila. We're hanging up by the top up there. So what I do is I run the cords under here and I just tie some form of weird constantly looping over each other knots so that way when it gets tighter and pulls on itself it holds tighter. Uh, as, as a habit I always leave my kickstand down just in case anything drops 
um, there's like a, you know, 50-50-ish percent chance that it'll fall back on the side with the kickstand and hopefully catch itself. If not, too bad. Um, as you can tell, the bike's already been dropped several times. I have literally dropped this bike on myself before and I have actually laid it down, pulling into a parking space, sadly. It was very anticlimactic and uh, I ran something over that was slippery and just kind of fell over. Um, yeah, that'll happen. So, anyways, um, the thing I don't like about doing it like this, though, is uh, I can't really move my handlebars left and right, which I forgot about that. I'm supposed to wire it through over here, underneath the bottom of the frame, but instead I did it by the triple tree, so it's kind of uh, holding up right here, constricting my movement with that. So, yeah, whatever. I can get I can get around it, still work it out. So we'll start taking it off. Smart ass reasons being that I am smart. I re just remembered I need to take my front tire off before being able to take any of that stuff off. Uh, so, um, and I also got to pull the fender off. If you guys want to know this fender is actually off of a moped. That's why it's so tiny and it looks sweet. Um, yeah, that's a that's a moped front fender. It's actually been broken right here and all the way along the front right here. Um, hashtag bondo and bodywork which I'm okay at so um yeah moped fender hashtag bike mods <laughs> so we're gonna get the front tire off and then uh, figure it out from there alright so front wheels gone now I just gotta undo these those up there for the handlebars and then the bottom part is for the uh, upper triple trees that hold the rest of the forks uh, together as well as these and these I mean a lot of things hold this in place and honestly it's because you don't want this to come loose because that would be very tragic. I also have to take off this. This is a custom made front bracket for my headlight. And then, more custom made, this is a custom made bracket for my gauges. Yeah, see? Custom plate and everything. <sighs> that bracket right there, that L shaped part is actually made from parts of a TV stand, believe it or not. So anyways, uh, let's uh, start taking these apart. A little thing with uh, using an Allen key, I got one in there. This one's all rusted up because someone decided to spill beer on it and not clean it up. Um, and I don't drink, so obviously I don't know who it was. But here's a little tip. If one of these are stuck and you have a lot of trouble, what is that? Then the extend rod on a, with a socket on it. And that actually helps get some really good leverage. I actually use a method like this to tighten these ones up here because I want to make sure these are extremely tight because, once again, Having your front handlebars fall off is a really shitty situation if you're on a bike. So, but yeah, that's a little method I use to uh, loosen up tough bolts. See, the, the bottom one was pretty easy. So, oh yeah, custom horn mount. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, so, we can pull these off. This is for my headlight bracket. Um, yeah, definitely a little nice to make yourself your own little pry bar for these since they don't really have actual pry bars they just have longer ones and it's a lot easier to have a pry bar so I was pulling this off and as you can see it, it kind of started falling so I need to put something underneath it because uh, I don't really want it to just fall yeah it's been a while since I've taken these off I forgot how heavy these things were so let's uh let's stick this thing underneath it and see if I can help out come on go back there we go Sorry, I'm holding the camera, so let's put that there. Turns out that this doesn't want to fit in here. There we go. All right, so we'll give it something to drop on. See, it's leaking pretty roughly down here. Look how wet it's from hitting the ground or hitting the edge. It's all wet. Yeah, so we gotta fix that. And there we go. There's our leaky fork and my. De decal. I actually know a guy that makes these. He sells them for really cheap. I got like a whole bunch of uh, the high speed ones. Um, they're on my tires and stuff and on my fork. Um, and they're really good. I mean, I've scrubbed out them with degreaser and they, they really stay on there. He makes custom decals. So I think he only charged me like 15 bucks and he shipped me a, a whole bunch of them. So, but yep. It is off. By the way, this is probably the most annoying part of having to put it back together is these handlebars. L lining these up are just super annoying and I've never enjoyed doing it. Now a lot of people are really intimidated when it comes to these fork seals um, and to be honest they're not hard. I will give them a 9 out of 10 for how annoying they are um, but I but the, overall it's it's not really hard. The process usually takes me about an hour or two just because of how uh, tedious and annoying it can be but it's not like it's hard work and that's my phone. Oh my 
God, you can really tell it's been a while since I've touched my bike mechanically, at least the forks. So, because I am smart, I totally forgot the process of undoing this bolt before pulling them off. I don't know how I forgot that. That's like, I did that the first time I took these off, which was about two years ago. And, uh, I don't know how I forgot it again. I don't know. Well, I'm going to have to get it off. Shouldn't be too hard. I have... Worst comes to worst, I just wrap the forks up in a towel and clamp it with the the vice grips or something, some big ass pliers and hold them steady. But I'll get it off. Oh, easier than I thought. It's, oh, I hear some fluid wanting to come out. Yeah, it's coming off now. That was that was actually really easy. So I made a big deal out of that for nothing. I'm like a drama queen. Oh, let's put this right. Oops, dropping stuff. And let's show you guys what happens when you pop one of these open. Ew, fork oil. And my oil bucket's way over there. You know, for how much leaking this thing did, there's still a lot of fork oil in there. Yeah, I forgot I put some really high tension springs in here, which I don't know why because I'm only like 150 pounds. So there's really no reason for it. I just had them lying around and they were more expensive than what I had in there so I thought it'd be a good idea but I'm not gonna change them back to my normal ones which I should because I don't feel like taking both of these apart especially because that one's not leaking and I don't want to replace it and come into it leaking later so um, that one's been good for like I said I did this about six or seven months ago so I'm gonna leave that one alone so let's start the disassembly of this thing alrighty so it's peeing right now so there's a bolt in here inside that hole that basically holds the dampener to the bottom of the fork so I want to pull that off and this is where one of these come in real handy because this side is not long enough to fit in there and uh, reach that hole so this is where something like this comes in real handy as well as uh, once again another thing that would have been slightly easier if it was attached to the bike still but I didn't want fork oil to leak everywhere so I'm going to pull this part out and then be able should be able to pull the dampener out if I remember correctly I don't know I might not remember correctly. Alright, so I undid the bolt at the bottom, and uh, actually, these have actually been sprayed flat black. They used to be silver, so they actually still held up their paint really well. You gotta love that engine um, flat black paint. Um, it's holding on surprisingly well because that was done probably about eight months ago. So, um, yeah, we undid the bolt, so now these are just completely just trying to come out, trying to use something to catch some of the grease over here. I don't want it all over my garage floor. And there you go. There's your spring and dampener. And you have your fork tube and the bottom part, the sanction. So um, let's see if that bolt will fall out. There it is. And where's that washer? There it is. Washer. Probably should clean these off and make sure before I put them back in. You don't want like particles and stuff inside of your uh, inside your fork oil. So I wonder why this was leaking at the bottom. It was too. So. We'll fix that too. Alrighty, so there is the dust seal. So first order of business, take the dust seal off, and then we're gonna take the rest of this thing apart. So to get the dust seal off, take a screwdriver, preferably a nice little dull one, um, preferably. But uh, if you're not gonna use a dull screwdriver, it's not gonna matter. Just be careful. So we take a flathead, and you basically are gonna pry it in between the dust seal and the piece of metal right here like I said you gotta be very careful um, not to scratch up you do not want to put a single scratch on your uh, sanction which is the big shiny metal piece because one scratch on that thing can lead to forever leaking fork seals so and popped off so now um, there's gonna be a little washer inside of here and you're gonna get rid of that first or not washer but like a uh, it's a little metal, annoying, very, very annoying piece. It's like a little ring. And you know, pop out one side of it with this little flathead. And then basically just pull up on it, and uh, the rest of it should basically just start popping out pretty easy from there. Yep. So. Once again, another very annoying part. Like I said, this 
process isn't really too hard. It's very tedious and annoying is what it is. Alright, there it is. That's the very annoying ring that is annoying to install and uninstall. Okay, so now we have the thing in there and we're going to slide hammer it out. You just... And there you have it. There is your fork seal. Along with uh, these two little, two little rings you have here. There's one and then the second one's right here. And this is the fork seal. So, obviously in order to get the fork seal off, we're going to have to take apart these little rings. So you just take this ring off. Slide it off. There's one little ring. This is a uh, metal. And then we have another ring that will slide off even easier. It's also metal. And last but not least, we have our washer and our fork seal that does not want to come out so this is the part we're going to be replacing right here this annoying piece like that so yippee for large amounts of work for little payoff alright so the first thing we're going to do is clean this thing off a little bit it's oily and dirty and we have our new fork seal and a uh, tool you're going to need to put this on is called a fork seal driver. Now they run for about $80 and it's just a useless piece of two half circles of metal that go together and uh, I have this. This is a piece of pipe I cut and I wrapped it in some really soft tape around so the edges aren't sharp. That's the last thing you want to do is cut open your fork seal. And I use this to drive it in. I'll show you guys more on how that works. This is the ghetto way. Not necessarily recommended but I don't recommend spending $70 on a tool that you're not really going to need too much though it would have been handy for me to have seeing I didn't think I was going to need it this much but I definitely do need it that much now so probably should have bought one but since I don't have one and I'm not going to buy one now maybe in the future who knows so we're going to go ahead and clean this thing off and I'll show you guys a method of installing the fork seal alrighty so I cleaned off the uh, dust seal I'm going to be reusing now dust seals it's not too big of a deal to reuse um, it's not going to make too big a difference um, I would suggest using one in good shape and this one's still in brand new shape because like I said it was just replaced. I do not recommend reusing fork seals. That is a horrible idea. You never want to do that um, unless you absolutely have to and there's a big difference between waiting for one to come in and absolutely having to do it. So um, and unless you're like me and have to drive your bike places um, as your main mode of transportation I would uh, suggest buying and waiting for that new set. So right here along the tops if you guys just saw there's some sharp edges right here and those will cut up the insides of your dust seals pretty bad so you want to make sure that you uh, put the dust seal on properly now I usually use a uh, uh, sandwich bag and just rip off the sandwich part um, the closing part and then you just put it over the front so now it's like a smooth surface and then you can now take your new fork seal and slide it on safely over that and it's not going to get cut up on that metal edge in there so there we go so now that our fork seal is on and in place I might want to get that piece of uh, plastic out there that's gonna make it leak like crazy alright so now there's the fork seal in place so now we need to throw our little metal washers back on here and uh, get it all back together so with the metal washers I'm gonna do roughly the same thing I'm just gonna give them a quick wipe down we don't want any uh, any particles of really anything in between them I mean some paper towel really isn't gonna kill anything better than having dirt or like sand pieces or particles in there like rough particles uh, metal pieces that were grinded off a little bit stuff like that you don't want yeah whenever you do this it's actually nice if you have both your forks um, removed take them apart and do them one at a time that way you always have one that's fully together so you can always look at it to make sure everything's going in the right way because things do have a top and a bottom side even though it's just a flat washer um, believe it or not. So the fork seal is now in there, but it's not properly seated. Obviously, we got to seat it in there, get it in there nice and deep, like, and that's where this comes into play. So what I do is I cope it around the edges like that. Take a hammer and I smack on this side, and then I just work my way around it until it's all the way seated. You'll know it's all the way seated when the notches for this thing are visible, and it'll it'll basically be going in about a quarter inch um, in there. So we'll get knocking away pressed in I got the dust seal back on and all I need to do is screw it in from the bottom and uh, fill it with some fork oil close it up and uh, hopefully this time it holds for longer than three months we'll find out front forks back on just put the tire back on and uh, do a quick little hump test and uh, that's basically it for the forks and probably give it a bath in a little bit too 
So yeah, you guys, that's Steven's little day off. This is what I do on my weekends and why I'm always so busy. Because I either have the channel, something new to do with my computer, or something I need to do in my garage. So anyways, you guys, stay tuned for random vlogs by me. Catch you guys later.